Okay there folks, I'm going to be talking about Bob Dylan's 13th studio album titled Dylan. A lot of people don't consider this his 13th studio album because he did not release this on his own. It was released by uh, Columbia, released without Bob Dylan's approval of course, in 1973 uh, after the album Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid was released. So people don't consider it a proper studio album because of the fact that it was released without his approval, without his authorization. It was pieced together by people at Columbia. Bob Dylan had moved to uh, Asylum Records uh, to record his Planet Waves album temporarily. He came back eventually to uh, Columbia. But anyhow, uh, this album, you know, when this album came out in 73, I did not know about it. Um, yeah, I had the, uh, the plan, I had the uh, uh, Pat Garrett album. And Planet Waves, but I did not have the Dylan album. I don't even remember knowing that it was released. It's kind of weird. I don't even remember that. Now, 1973 was a powerful year in music. I was really into The Who, you know, Alice Cooper, uh, Todd Rundgren, uh, The Stones. Everybody was putting out marvelous albums in 73. So I'm sure my attention was quite spread everywhere and I wasn't paying attention. But... When this album came out, I didn't know about it, and I only found out about it later, and I remember seeing it in the stores and hearing about how it was no good, it was not approved, and blah, blah, blah. So I never got around to buying it. And of course, it never came out on CD until just until just recently when this box set came out. When this box set came out, uh, not that long ago, that's when the album uh, was pre presented for the first time on CD. And to be honest with you, I never really listened to it much until that album uh, box set came out. So um, I remember hearing some, hearing it now and then, here and there, but never really paid attention. And I always heard how bad it was and this and that. And I'm, I will say right now, it's not great. Of course it's not. Um, let's see, it did go gold in the United States. That's amazing that I don't remember it coming out in 73. Anyhow, um, it was from the Self-Portrait and New Morning Outtakes. Self-Portrait uh, were from uh, April 1969. New Morning was from 1970, June of 1970. The album cover, you know, uh, you would think it was a Bob Dylan painting like Self-Portrait was, but it was not. It was painted by uh, uh, Columbia Records art director John Berg. All right, let's go through the songs. Let me just say about this album that um, as much as I heard about how bad it was, I was really expecting something really, really bad, unlistenable. But I don't. I didn't get that at all. Um, it's, it's, in some ways, there's some songs in here I kind of like quite a bit, you know. But uh, you know, I'd say it definitely is an album that that you know someone of my generation or older who who doesn't much care for Bob Dylan might actually enjoy this album because it's so smooth, it's so polished. Some would say overproduced, perhaps. Um, it definitely is an album that my grandparents would have liked. I'll put it that way, okay? Let's go through the songs. Uh, the first song is Lily of the West, a traditional folk tune from um, Ireland or England. And uh, to me, it sounds a lot like a song that uh, Sons of the Pioneers would sing, an old western song, country western song, about Flora, the Lily of the West. Still I love my faithless Flora, the Lily of the West. And then the backing vocals on this whole album, the backing vocals really stand out a lot. The the female vocals. Uh, the only thing that's different about them, they have this, this sort of a vibrato in their voice. <laughs> it sounds a little very old fashioned. It's I tell you, it sounds like something from Lawrence Welk or something uh, on occasion. But anyhow, this song, Lily of the Wilson, well, Lily of the Wilson, Lily of the West, <laughs> was recorded in 1961 by Jean Baez. It's about a man who is so smitten with Flora Lily of the West that he murders his rival, also vying for attention, and ends up being sentenced for it. And he still loves her nonetheless. <laughs> okay. I like the song. I like this first opening song. It's got a nice, nice feel to it. I like that country western feel. Hey, it's fun. The next song, uh, I Can't Help Falling, Can't Help Falling in Love with You. You know, the old uh, uh, Elvis Presley song. I absolutely love this song. I always have. I, I, I'm not a huge Presley fan, but I've, I've always thought this was a beautiful song. For I can't help falling in love with you. Now, Dylan sings it melodically somewhat different than that. You know, and I like what, when I first heard this song playing on this album, I was like, oh, hell no, here we go. Dylan's going to tackle this song. 
but he does a good job. I think he does a good job. Um, I actually like it. It's such a good song. I think pretty much anybody singing this song would be good. And Dylan does a good job. I like his melodically uh, somewhat different take on it. It's good. The next song is a traditional song, Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane. Ain't nothing to do but sit down and sing and rock about my Sarah Jane. He says, Sarah Jane. La, 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 la. I could do without the la, la's. <laughs> it's... It's just so corny sounding. You know, this whole album sounds so, um, again, it sounds like something my grandparents would have liked. It's, it's okay. It's not bad. You know, it's, it's fun. Yeah. I, I, I don't, it's not bad. I just like it. It's fine. Okay. All right. Um, the next song, Ballad of Ira Hayes, is a very new morningish style talking ballad about one of the Marines uh, raising the flag on the Iwo Jima uh, Memorial. Uh, this Marine happened to be... Um, Native American, and it was written by folk singer Peter Lafarge, one of uh, Dylan's New York City folk singing buddies back in the early 60s. It's a good song. It's not great. It's okay. It's very New Morning-ish sounding. You know. uh, the next song, Mr. Bojangles. Now, this was a Jerry Jeff Walker song, and uh, the version I remember primarily when I was growing up was the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band version from 71, and I remember liking the song back then. I knew a man, Bojangles, and he danced for you. You know, I've always liked the song, and I think the song musically fits well with Dylan's style. I think it does. I think it's, it's kind of it's perfect for him. But, but lyrically, I, I always thought the song was rather clumsy lyrically. The rhythms in the lyrics are, are not, not very good. And so when, you, when anyone who sings it, it feels like it feels out of... I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to explain. I've, I've never much cared for the song, um, the way it sounds lyrically. Musically, it's fine. I, I think it's okay here. I don't think Dylan does a great job of it. He does fine. I mean, it's not bad. It's just not very good, you know. Okay. The next song, Mary Ann, a traditional waltz. Fare thee well, my own true love. Fare thee well for a while. Nice vibrato backing vocals, very retro sounding again. The backing vocals with the, uh, the vibrato sound, very, like I say, Lawrence Welkish or something. I don't know what it is. It's something very easy listening sounding about it. I don't know. Uh, then the next song, Big Yellow Taxi. You know, of course, the classic Joni Mitchell song. They pay paradise and put up a parking lot. You know, it's hard to sing Joni Mitchell other than Joni Mitchell. She, she's got such a unique style. Her songs are so unique. Uh, Bob Dylan just, I don't know. I, um, I don't think he does a great job. I don't think anybody can do a great job singing Joni Mitchell other than her. That's my opinion. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next song, A Fool Such As I. Very Nashville skyline-ish. Very Nashville skyline. It's nice, upbeat, fun, fun country rocker. Sort of like To Be Alone With You from the Nashville Skyline album. That's a good, fun song with great playing and singing by all. Just fun. I don't know. What can I say? It's a fun song. I do like it. But I like that Nashville Skyline stuff. Then the final song is Spanish is the Loving Tongue. This is based on a poem by cowboy poet Charles Badger Clark. It was set to music in 1925 and covered by many people. The best version I've ever heard, though, is by Bob Dylan on the Another Self Portrait. Absolutely lovely. All right. Now, it's not bad here. It's pretty good here, too. It's just a pretty song. Spanish is the Loving Tongue. Soft as springtime, light as spray. There was a girl I learned it from, living down Sonora Way. It's a very pretty song, it really is. And they do a good job here, it's lovely. They add a little bit of a tango feel to it towards the end. It's a little bit corny, but it's good. Anyhow, this album is not a classic by any stretch, you know. And I can see why Dylan uh, didn't release these songs uh, initially. And... Uh, even though they're they're well done, it's polished, everything's nice, nothing bad. Um, and he did release it on this box set here, so you know, so obviously it's okay for everybody to hear it to hear these songs now. <laughs> right? I wouldn't uh, probably not going to listen to the album very much. Uh, to be honest with you, I, there's so many great albums by him. Probably be one of the least albums I listen to. But I'll tell you, it's not his worst album. I don't believe it's his worst. There's a couple coming up here that I think actually uh, are worse than this one, and we'll get to those later. But um, whatever. Okay, folks, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.